Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Molly Hendrickson with the latest from Denver 7. This morning we, we have tragic new details in the shooting death of a Cherokee Trail High School student. Lloyd Chavez was set to graduate next week. Now four teens are facing charges for his murder. Denver 7's Eric Lufer explains this was a botched robbery that turned tragic. It was the last Friday before graduation here at Cherokee Trail High School in Southeast Aurora. And unfortunately, students and staff have this on their mind. A tragic case unfolding with four teens facing serious charges. Here's what we know right now. Chavez was shot May 8th. He's in the center of this photo here with blonde hair. Court records obtained by Denver 7 detail a botched robbery. A cheerleader at Cherokee Trail High School in Aurora confesses to helping Planet with three other boys. They wanted vape juice, according to investigators. The affidavit explains, quote, they never talked about shooting him, only to scare him, end quote. But police found Chavez in his home with a gunshot wound to the chest. The affidavit also says he was he identified who shot him to a nurse before dying in surgery so tragic Denver 7 recently talked with Chavez's rugby coach you look at something like this and you try to say can anything good come out of this if other people take it upon themselves to do what Lloyd did which was make people feel good about themselves make them happy make them feel included all four suspects in this case face one count of felony murder. I'm Eric Lufer, Denver 7. Tomorrow there will be a celebration of life ceremony for Lloyd. It will be at Cook Park in Glendale at 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. On Monday, the STEM School Highlands Ranch community will graduate, but with the celebration will also be a solemn reminder of the classmate they lost. A private funeral will take place today for 18-year-old Kendrick Castillo. He was killed in the STEM school shooting last week. The Broncos have agreed to host the STEM graduation at the UC Health Training Facility on Monday. School officials say they wanted to have a private event off campus. Boulder police have completed the investigation into a controversial video showing officers detaining a black man picking up trash in his backyard. The investigation found this was not a case of racial profiling, but the officer who detained the man has since resigned. New body cam footage released by Boulder police show more of this situation. They say they want to be as transparent as possible. The Boulder City Council has created a task force to study police oversight in light of this. On Monday, Denver will mail out ballots for the June 4th runoff election. The mayor's race is down to incumbent mayor Michael Hancock and challenger Jamie Gillis. But pay attention to the ballot because there is a new initiative on there as well. It will ask Denver voters if they'd like to vote before any taxes are spent to bid or host a future Olympic Games. Every registered voter in Denver will get a ballot whether you voted earlier this month or not. In our ever-changing Colorado, transplants from California tend to get a bad rap whether they deserve it or not. So when we found out that there is a company actively trying to help more people move to Colorado, we had to find out why. Denver 7's Nicole Brady explains there are classes showing people how to move out of California and here to Denver. The creator of LeavingTheBayArea.com is a real estate broker who realized more and more of his clients were looking to move out of California. Next month, they're hosting a whole webinar to tell people how to make the move here to Denver. And they're coming for different reasons, but mostly he says they are trying to escape the high cost of living. The median home price in the nine-county Bay Area, $830,000. This week, we actually showed you a shack in San Francisco that is selling for $2.5 million. Meanwhile, here in Denver, we have a growing tech sector, a median home price that's half of what it is in the Bay Area, and recreation opportunities that appeal to Californians. You know, clearly, Colorado is one of the few areas, you know, that kind of dwarfs, uh, you know, California as far as, you know, outdoors and, and skiing and, and uh, you know, things like that. Yeah, and the creator says there's been a bit of a backlash, an occasional email that says no more Californians in our city. They do actually help people move to 13 different cities around the country, not just Denver. Nicole Brady, Denver 7. A little dose of Colorado spring weather this weekend. Here's Lisa. Yeah, a little of everything from 80s yesterday to a cooler day today. Now, the normal high today is 72 degrees. We are going to see a few thunderstorms this afternoon, and we're going to be closer to that normal high than to the record high. Yesterday, it was 80s. Today, we're going to be in the 70s, about 10 to 12 degrees cooler. Uh, and today, we are looking at, again, unfortunately, the threat for a little severe weather. I'll show you that coming up. As far as your plants go, a lot of people planting here within the last week since Mother's Day. Your plants are 
going to be safe overnight through the weekend, at least from the cold weather. We could get some severe weather that could mess with that. And next week, maybe even a little snow. Rain may briefly turn over to snow next week. But take a look at our Super 7 day. Chance for some afternoon showers today and a few thunderstorms. There is going to be a slight risk of severe weather covering northeastern Colorado. So closer to Erie, north up to Fort Collins, and then east from there, there is going to be a risk for some larger hail and damaging winds and even some isolated tornadoes expected as you get a little closer to that Colorado Nebraska state line. Tomorrow we're in the low 60s. It's going to be a cooler day on Saturday, some dry weather in the morning, but then more storms and showers by the afternoon and then 60s through Sunday. A little drier on Sunday. Now early Sunday morning, we're going to be under a partly sunny sky. A lot of people are going to be downtown and there at City Park for the Colfax Marathon. Actually some pretty good running weather. We're likely in the low 40s early that morning at about 6 o'clock with some clouds and then it's dry and chilly through midday. That chance for a few thunderstorms later in the day. So there within that first few hours in the morning, actually some pretty good running weather. Early next week, it's going to be wet, a little soggy, you guys, Monday into Tuesday with some low to upper 50s. And then we start to warm up by the end of next week. So next weekend could be quite a bit warmer. If you're looking to get out of town, a project to completely revamp the Denver airport is delayed once again, while airport officials continue to negotiate with contractors. DIA is renovating the terminals and moving up the security level. The project was supposed to wrap by 2021, but now that date has been pushed back almost two years to spring or summer of 2023, and that's assuming there are no more delays. Middle and high school students at a school in Denver's Stapleton neighborhood head to class with a new school name. The Denver School of Science and Technology, or DSST Stapleton, is now called DSST Montview. The change has already been made on the school's website. Students raise concerns about the name Stapleton having affiliations with the KKK. Benjamin Stapleton was Denver's mayor in the early 1900s. He was also a member of the the KKK. Today, Governor Polis will sign another round of bills into law, and one of them expands funding for affordable housing. It will take money from the state treasurer's unclaimed property trust fund, increasing affordable housing tax credits from five to ten million dollars. The governor will also sign a bill that will require drivers to have snow tires or chains while driving I-70 between Dotsero and Morrison. This would be for nine months out of the year, September to May, whether it's sunny or snowy outside. It is still unclear how state troopers will enforce it, but not to worry about that just yet. It won't take effect until August. Every Friday, we take your questions about all the development in our Colorado. There is so much construction, especially this time of year, and we find ourselves wondering, what's that? Yeah, I asked myself that same question as I drove past a very large building in the works in the Denver Tech Center. Denver 7's Micah Smith answers, what's that? I can see exactly why this large building would catch your eye as I was driving down here to figure out what this is. I could literally see it from a mile away. We're just west of the Denver Tech Center and we're already starting to see what Brian saw and what inspired this week's What's That? This week's What's That? takes us right up to the Bellevue Light Rail Station to a building that towers above the rest. Our very own Brian Sanders asked, what's that west of I-25 in Bellevue in DTC? Brian, it's an office slash retail building with 380,000 square feet of office space and 16,000 square feet for stores and restaurants. It will also have a fitness center, yoga studio, and bike bar. The developer and leasing manager say they expect this place to see a lot of business because of its prime location. It's the closest location in the southeast suburban market to downtown. And it's uh, Southeast Suburban's our biggest market uh, in terms of office users. The main driver here is the light rail station just behind us here. We're, we sit right at the tarmac of, of, of Bellevue Station. So it's really a, a multimodal transit oriented development. When the building is complete, it will be 15 floors and a part of a 45 acre redevelopment project for this entire area. The developer says this specific building should be complete by October and the entire project should be finished within the next 10 years. Are you seeing something interesting on your way to work or school? We want to hear from you. Go ahead and email us at ourco at the denverchannel.com and don't forget to put what's that in the subject line. Reporting in Denver, Micah Smith, Denver 7. 
development looks very impressive yeah. there. Today, Make-A-Wish Colorado gets a big donation, all thanks to the hard work of some local middle school students. Back in February, we shared how 8th grade students at Falcon Bluffs Middle School in Littleton created Scrabble candle holders. The money raised will go to Make-A-Wish Colorado. Students say the project benefits them as well. 100% a win-win. We, we get a lot from it. and they get money from it. People ask you what do you want to be when you grow up and this is kind of an opportunity to see what adults do for a living. Well the students did a great job this year. They are donating six thousand dollars to make a wish. That's almost as much money as they raised over the last four years combined. Mm, well done. This has been your Denver 7 On Demand Update. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you check back here later today for another update and download the free Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. Happy Friday.